All right, last one. Unit L review, capacitance part four. Oh, wait, that's not part four. Wait one second. I mean part four. Okay, great. So um, here we have a capacitor. Now, th this is these aren't lines. These aren't wires. These are actually plates. They, they actually would be like if my, my hands were like that. You know, and they're a distance D apart, and they have an area A. And let's call the capacitance as it is right now, C naught. And then uh, I take, and I'm going to insert a dielectric. Now, the dielectric has a K of 2. But I'm only going to insert it halfway up, so it's going to go up to just a little bit. And I was wondering if you could tell me what the new capacitance will be compared to the old. All right, well, good luck trying to figure that one out. I'll see you in a little bit. All right, did you really try? Okay, let's see how it works. Well, I want you to know something. You know how this capacitor compares to this capacitor, where you just have half? If you only have half the area of the plates, you know, you just take half of it, isn't this going to be C0 over 2? Yeah, that this right there is C0 over 2. And so would this be C0 over 2, except there's a dielectric in there right now. So that dielectric, you'd have to put a 2 in front of it. And so what we really have, if you want to know how C prime relates to C old, the, the old one, C0 rather, it's going to be um, half of C0. That takes care of this part. Plus, now um, for this part, you again, you have only half of the area, but you have twice, you, you have a dielectric that's 2 there. So I'm going to put a 2 C0 over 2. So that looks like it's 3 halves, 3 C0 over 2. And there you are. Okay, next one. Hey, this is a plate that goes on for a long ways. It goes on a long way that way and a long way that way. Um, and it comes out this way too, a long way. And into the table. So it's this plate that's infinitely long in all directions. Okay, so um, if that's the case... Could you tell me which point has the biggest electric field, A, B, C, or D? Go ahead and see if you can reason that through. Yeah, really see if you could reason it through. Yeah, pause it. Okay, so here goes. Um, I want you to know that the uh, field lines look like this going away. They, they don't diverge. They, they never diverge. And so if that's the case, then A, B, C, and D, they all have the same electric field. See, um, right here, if I put a positive test charge, it's going to get pushed a lot more by these guys right here. It'll be pushed a lot more than, say, C would be if I put it at C. But these over here, they are going to push a lot less these over here are going to push a lot less that way those it's not going to hardly put these side ones are going to hardly put anything up there whereas c it's further away from this little block so um, that's not going to have as much push from them but you see these guys here and here these guys are going to have more of an effect than when it's at a and that works out to be a total wash and um, I don't know if you remember us doing this, but we use Gauss's law to, if I wanted to say, find the, the field, say right there, I can put a pillbox or a, um, a cylinder there, put it on the same, the same distance going this way. And it turns out that there's only flux going through the top and the bottom. And the, then the, the flux coming um, through the sides is zero. Now the the electric feet, or the charge is only there. That's where the charge is, and so if we say that this has a charge sigma, that's a surface charge density. It's a charge per area, and let's say this is this is a. That area is a. Then the charge enclosed is just sigma a over epsilon naught. Now the flux, though the total flux is just the flux out the top and the bottom. So that would be two a. E. 2, 2A 
excuse me, the flux would be 2a times e, yeah. I skipped some steps there, but you can see that um, if I get rid of the a and bring the 2 on the other side, you can see the electric field is constant. doesn't matter. It doesn't depend on how high up you go. Okay. All right. Now let's take and put two plates like this together, like a capacitor, but these go for a long ways. So you got to, these are going, these are huge plates and they're charged up negative and positive. They both have the same sigma, um, positive sigma and negative sigma, but the same magnitude for sigma. Okay, could you tell me which has the stronger field, A, B, or C? Okay, it turns out that B and C have the exact same field strength. Uh, the, and A has a much weaker field. Let's explain, first of all, why A is a weak field. If I put a positive test charge there, then it's, this one right here is going to push upward on that positive test charge this way. Now, get rid of this guy, this top plate in your mind. And now, what way will this one push? Well, it's going to not push. It's going to pull. It's going to pull a positive charge this way. And we know that it's independent of the distance. Like if I go up further, this doesn't push any more or less on the charge. And so these are going to, these are going to cancel out. In fact, I'm going to tell you the electric field in this region is zero. The electric field in this region is zero because a positive test charge put there is going to be pull, pushed up as much as it's pulled down. So the electric field is, is zero there if these are infinitely uh, big plates. However, in here, uh, the, the field looks like this. Notice they're not diverging at all. And so the uh, field strength is the same everywhere between there. If you were a positive charge, you'd be um, repelled by these guys and attracted by these guys but it, it would always be the exact same amount because of the independence of, of E on how far down you go or up. So B and C have the same. The E at B is equal to the E at C, and the E at A is equal to zero. All right, well, make sure you do all the problems in the unit, and you should be okay. I'm thinking you should be okay. I'll see you tomorrow.